When you bring up an Egan Matrix preset, the first inclination is probably to play with the barrels and see what kind of sounds you can get out of that preset. And for the majority of the presets, you can get an amazing variety of sounds. But when I bring up a preset, I'm also thinking about what can I do to use this preset as a template for enhanced sonic possibilities? What can I do to maybe change the template that I'm looking at, or the preset, obviously, in different ways, and maybe in some simple ways that you don't even need to know that much about the Egan matrix to do this kind of thing. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. What are some simple techniques without having to go into the gritty details of a sound that you can use to actually start fiddling around with the matrix and getting some very interesting uh, sounds coming out using Ed's heavy lifting and other people who have created the initial presets. As long as there is some room in the matrix for you to maneuver, there's a lot of possibility here. So let's go in and let's take uh, one of the presets that can easily fit into this kind of category. The spinning oboe is uh, one that I use in this example, but there are many presets like this where you can see the matrix isn't that filled up. In this case, they're using a Harman set to an oboe one sound with some settings that Ed optimized for this with some shape generation, so there's going to be some movement in here. Uh, outputting, you can see, uh, to different formulas on left and right, so there's going to be some kind of motion going on probably in the output, because I'm not just setting this to Z or the same formula. And obviously you can hear there's a lot of motion going on and repetition that the shape generators are creating, obviously. I don't even have to know how it's doing that right now. I just intuitively know with that kind of emotion there's likely a shape generator involved and uh, looking at the display as I press harder I can see my repetitions change and I don't have much difference on why here so it's more pressure it's more pressure generated all right, great. And I can play with a barrel here to modify the speed of this thing. And, all right, it's a single oboe that Ed's got spinning around here. What can I do with limited knowledge of the matrix to play around with this thing, to do more than just change barrels. Right? Well, one thing that you can always do when you're looking at a sound that's based on a Harman set to an instrument is just go in and see what other instruments uh, settings you can use that might be a similar uh, sound. Let's go to Crystal, say. That's interesting. Now, maybe the settings of the Harman are not optimized for that sound, but very often uh, just switching sounds, that almost sounds animalistic, uh, can uh, give you a, a great variety of change. So that's one thing that you can always think of doing if you've never thought about diddling around with the instrument itself. Um, let's go back to our oboe. Now, of course, whenever you're fooling around with the matrix and you don't know what you're doing, as Ed has said many times, it's a good idea to play with the gain and bring it down uh, so that you don't do something like create a huge sonic explosion and uh, hurt yourself. Uh, another technique I use here sometimes uh, when I don't want to be dragging up there all, all the time is just use a, use a formula that's spare 
stick it down here as a multiplier, a volume multiplier. Since it's zero right now, I'm not going to get anything coming out. And I can easily set it to one, to unity, to basically give me exactly the sound that the preset had at the beginning. Or I can just bring it down, uh, which is in effect doing similar things as changing gain. But maybe I don't want it. I don't want to change what the the real gain setting for this is. And here, when I'm done, um, in my final preset that I've created is to my liking I can just remove that formula right. but I don't think for this for this one I don't think that there's going to be any any problem so I won't worry about that now so what's the first logical thing that I can do to fool around with this preset you can see it's pretty simple it's only using this one harm man with some shape generators and very simple output so the first thing that I think of when I see a preset like this is how can I take whatever is being used as a resource and simply copy it to a similar resource if it's free. And that's what I'll do here. So I'll basically select the second harm man. For right now, I'll just set it to an OVO. And let me just copy in the same exact thing. FX. This is point 0.1 multiplied by g. I'm not even concerned what these formulas are doing right now. All I'm th thinking of is just mindlessly copying from the one harman to another, and let's see how I can use these two harmans now in a few ways to create a, a different preset, you know, based on the original sound, but maybe a little bit different. All right, uh, let's just continue here. Now, I'm not sure what this is doing here because in terms of the Harman, th these three middle slots are unused. So Ed was obviously probably playing around with things f maybe from some other resource. Frankly, I don't think we even need them. Unless there's something about this I don't understand, we can just get rid of those, and it'll make things a little easier for us to look at. And let's go. There's A, B, and G. All right. So I basically copied Oboe 1, Harman 1 to Oboe 1, Harman 2. And now what I'll do on the outputs, I'll absentmindedly again just use the same kind of thing that Ed used, same formulas, because originally he's outputting the A resource, right? Uh, now I'm going to output the B. And so for right now, I'll just clear out the A. <laughs> And, not surprisingly, I basically have the same thing I had before. Now, here's a, here's a place where you have to watch out a little bit. If I have them both coming in together, obviously, I'm going to get an increased volume coming out because I'm basically doubling what I did. And sometimes, sometimes that is going to create problems where you may have to take this formula, whatever it's doing, and bring it down, or put a volume multiplier on, like it did before, to, to basically decrease the overall output. What I'm doing here, though, uh, is not going to really affect this too much. Now, I've got two identical things. That's not really going to help me too much in terms of creating new sounds. So the first thing I can look at when I see these two harmans is one's at one frequency. Instead of this being the same frequency, let's change the frequency so I have two of these harmans going on, but at two different pitches. Simplest thing to do is reduce one you know, by half the frequency, uh, making it an octave lower. And now, I'm starting to play around. And I can see that I've got, you know, a little bit of difference there. The next thing I could do, obviously, is, well, I've got oboe 1. What if I make this oboe 2? A lot more chaotic, but now I'm getting somewhere. So what are some other things I can do to maybe maybe isolate the second Harman and give that some identity of its own? All right. Well, one thing I can do is try and change the speed of this to be independent from the speed 
of this. All right. And to do that, let's figure out what's controlling the speed. Obviously, we have a speed barrel here. So let's see what's, what's controlling barrel one. That's formula C. Where's formula C? That's a shape generator. All right, let's create another shape generator just like the one that's being used here. Right. And what we'll do is we'll go and edit and we'll say two equals speed two using barrel type 31 and let's change that to speed one. All right. Okay, so now I have a second uh, speed barrel defined, which is going to control the speed of my second Harman. Now we need to in include a shape generator that's going to do that. So let's take a formula, free formula I. What we'll do is we'll copy what was in C into I. To do that, you just go to your formula you want to create I. You say copy. Let's copy C into it. All right. Now I is exactly the same as C. So I can use that in another shape generator there, I. W is just the, the pressure. So now I've created my other shape generator. I'm going to want to make sure that the shape generator I'm copying, number one, is the same kind of shape generator. This is continuous, and so this is continuous too. If this had been single cycle, I'd want to make that single cycle as well. I'm just trying to copy exactly what the first Harman is, is doing in terms of its speed. All right. Now, in this one, in C, you could see it was using barrel 1. All right. So I, all right, which now is also using barrel 1 because it was simply copied from C, I'll change this now to use barrel 2. So now the control of that will be tied to my new barrel that I just created. Now we need to see how we used C. Well, I can see from my formulas on the right-hand side that A is using shape generator 1. So what I'm going to want to do is copy another formula where the A is in my Harman 2. Let's get J. That's unused. We'll copy A into that. Okay. And now I'll put J there on that second Harman so I can independently control speed of that. Now, of course, J is copied in using shape generator 1, so I'm going to want to use the new shape generator 4 that I created for this that's tied to the second barrel. So I'll change that to shape generator 4. And now, when I take out the first Harman, if I just play the new one I created, there it stopped. there I'm controlling that so I can control that let's say we set that one at a slower speed than my first one set at and there I'm starting to I've got two spinning elbows now spinning at different kind of rates and maybe what I'll do because this one had a formula that's going uh, a little differently from left to right. Let's just reverse that on this guy. That gives me a little more motion. That's cool. And maybe I want to do one more thing here. I've set the frequency of my second Harman to this fixed value. Let me set this so that that can be a varying frequency based on a barrel. And to do that, let's get another formula, K. All right. We'll set that up so it goes right, to 1 right now. And we'll go in and basically add another barrel. 3 equals uh, freak of 2. Mm -hmm. Done. All right. And what we'll do here um, is not set the barrel so it starts at zero that would zero at the frequency that would probably not give me the effect that I want so let me start to set some reasonable frequency a point one say or something around there All right it's really hard to sometimes 
get exactly that number you want here. There we go. And now maybe I can bring this down to, oh, uh, no, actually, let's take this up so that it can go to twice the frequencies of x is a max. So let's set this to 10 and bring this down to, to 2. And basically, we'll actually bring it down to 1.9 so that my original offset of 0.1 plus that will give the max barrel a 2 doubling my frequency. Now we want to set this new formula that we set up here to barrel 3. And we'll use that as the multiplier on frequency instead of this fixed value. Now, I can change that second spinning oboe. anything I like. So, if you noticed, I actually played a little trick on you here, and I cut and pasted the video. I set this back to oboe 1 for Herman 2, because I just happened to like that sound a little, little better. But, obviously, you can play around and, and do what you like here. Now, a couple words on the technique of doing this, I had a pretty open matrix for this preset. Now sometimes you won't have all these barrels available to play with and that might limit what you can do with the preset, but that's okay. Uh, it's the technique in general that we're after here and there are many, many presets that you can use this technique on. Oftentimes you might have a preset that only uses one or two oscillators and maybe you'll double those up and do something with it. Maybe it's not a harm and that's being used here, but some kind of uh, big bank that you can double. Um, th there are many, many ways to use this technique. And as long as you know a little bit about the matrix to begin with, know how to set barrels, know basic operational things, you can use this to really dig in. And frankly, this has helped me learn the matrix a lot better and learn how sounds work in the matrix. One final word on this technique, and that's if you add enough, you could get into a situation where you'll overload your continuum, especially if you don't have an expanded continuum. You could get messages popping up saying you have to reduce polyphony, for example. You could get to a point where perhaps you start hearing a lot of buzzing and static and you don't know why, and that could be because you're exceeding the resources that you really can have on your continuum. So just be aware of that. In most cases, you're probably going to be okay, especially if you have a pretty clear matrix to begin with. Hope you enjoy this technique.